evening. Hello, everyone. I'm back. Oh, so I nearly cut you all off, thing. <laughs> I'm back. Right. I hope you've all had a nice day so far. I had one in earlier that was from Massachusetts. So I don't know what time they are on, but they're in Massachusetts. Anyway, um, as I said, tonight we're, we're back on about this lad, when I can get his picture pulled up. So many pictures on here, I've got to delete some of them. That one. For those who don't know, this is Sebastian Wayne Drake Rogers, who went missing on the 26th of February, between 12 a.m. and 6 a.m. He left the house, he's autistic, he got up, left the house with no shoes, no coat, no phone, no nothing else. Like no no snacks, no water, nothing. And just walked out the house. And has not been since seen since. A high profile search was put on for the first eight days where they had all these different agencies come through coming. They had drones, they had horsebacks, they had dogs, they had people on the boats, they had everything. Everything. And no what no sign of him. Not a sign. Not a footprint. Not a scent, not uh, a, a like sometimes if you're walking in bushes and whatever, you can catch your clothing, so you haven't got any bits of clothing, or cloth on bushes, nothing, nothing. There's no sign of him leaving the house, no, because his dogs picked up no scent, and that came from. One of the guys oh, who was organising the search. One of the top guys who was organising the search. He stated the dogs hit on nothing. Well, not on Sebastian, anyway. They did hit on the um, on this one big uh, skip thing that they use in the construction sites. So that is why... They did the landfill search at Kentucky. And um, since then, we've had we had one sort of sighting, which really booked everyone up in North Carolina, but came out not to be Sebastian. Um, but since, but really, we've had nothing. Law enforcement went quiet on us. Within, as soon as they stop scaled the search back, they went quiet on us. Because when they scaled the search back, they was looking at the investigation side of it. Not a peep out of them. We've had maybe one, two press interview things with them in the whole time that Sebastian has been missing. Now, if you watch them and you listen to what they say, it's very telling. It's very telling. And, but otherwise, we've not heard nothing. And YouTube has just gone wild on this case. Wild. And even though I don't agree with what Seth has said all the time, or what he's done all the time, I will not, 
I will not put a, a father down whose son is, is missing, right? Who has been out there searching, who had to give up the searching at one point because A, he had an injury to his shoulder, two, there was being followed and threatened. You know what I mean? Um, so for the safety of his searches, he had to call the search off, searches off. And since then, he got this guy, Tony Mathis, coming to help him. And since then, it just went downhill. Seriously, it went downhill. And what people tend to forget is there's three people in this case, maybe more. We don't know, but there's definitely three. That is Katie Proudfoot, Chris Proudfoot, and Seth Crowfoot. Seth works for the corrections facility, the jail. He's on camera at work from the moment he gets there to the moment he leaves. He's on camera. Why? Because there's criminals, bad guys, bad guys, bad women. They're there. There's nowhere he can walk around that complex without being on camera. Chris Proudfoot, it has been acknowledged and verified that he was at work on the Monday morning. But though it's a bit sus the time he was at work. Because he's not, he don't normally start till 7 and he was there at 5.15am. That's a bit sus for me. Right, Katie was at home with her son, Sebastian. They had a great day on that Sunday. They went to BJ, well, they picked up the niece, they met up with his aunts, they went to BJ's, they went bowling, then they went for uh, dinner, come home. He played in his, he took the trash out, apparently. He played in his room, nine o'clock, his mother said, Sebastian, time to go to bed. So he gets up and goes, no, no, puppies, love you, love you, mum. Off he goes. At ten o'clock, she said she heard him making, doing something in his room, messing about in his room. And she shouted, I don't know what you're doing in there, but you better get to sleep. And then she, She's on the f uh, she's on a phone call with Chris from nine forty five say till twelve, where he then tells her, "Look, you're falling asleep. Just get up, put the dogs away, and go to bed." Right, but since then it's come out like we've picked up on things. We've gone back over interviews. God, have I gone back over interviews to the point where? I can't watch no more interviews with that guy in it. I can't. I cannot do it. Right. And on the very first interview, now everyone keeps thinking the first interview was with the newsreel. It wasn't. Their first interview they ever did was with Duchess. Right. Where Katie said she fell asleep at 10 woke up about 12 and went to bed. But we know that before then, before, since then, she's come out in other interviews and she's gone, I was on the phone with CP from half nine till 12. I was reading, then she said she was reading a book from her coursework that she's doing at school and what else was he? She was reading a book, talking to Chris on the phone. Oh, and falling asleep. And I thought, God, this woman can work miracles. You know what I mean? I know I can do lots of jobs in one go. What, do this and do that. All different jobs. You know what I mean? Get them doing that. Literally. While doing one job, you're doing another job and things like that. But, but 
for some reason, there's no way I could be. Hi there, Karen. I wanna... Oh, Massachusetts here. Good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you, sweetheart. Anyway, so, um, I thought, I'm good, but there's no way I could talk to someone on the phone, read a book. I found that very hard to start off with, the fact that she was reading a book, which she needed to read for her coursework, and talk to someone on the phone. You know, me, when I'm reading anything to do with any coursework, I was doing when I was to be at college. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Um, when I was um, doing coursework, I'd be reading a book, but I'd have a notebook by the side of me because I'd write key things down. Right? Things that I needed to remember. So I'd be writing it down. And that way, I could remember it as well. Plus, it gave me a more simplified way of remembering what I had to remember. Rather than having to read a whole paragraph, I could just look at those. So, I thought, she's reading this book, talking to Chris. Okay. Now, I don't know if anyone's noticed in any of the interviews they ever did. When she mentioned... At 10 o'clock, she heard Sebastian in his room and she shouted through, I don't know what you're doing in here, in there, but you best get to sleep. That was her first version, the very first version. Chris don't say anything on that and never has. But I'm sure he would have heard a shout through because he was on the phone to her, was he not? He was her alibi for that, but he's not saying anything about that. Anyway, so, and then as the time goes on for each interview, they did, it then come out that apparently at 10 o'clock, she heard a thud. And I'm thinking, oh my God, how many more times is this woman going to change her story? How many more times? Apart from telling us the truth, which she hasn't, how many more times is she going to change her story? So now we've got a thud. At 10 o'clock, we've got a thud. And she, shout, she said, she shouted through, was that you, Bubba, falling out of bed? No, Mum. Well, whatever you're doing, you best get to bed. Get, best get to sleep. So, that was that. And again, she goes to bed at 12 o'clock. Gets up at 6 in the morning, goes to room, to wake him up, he's not there. And so it all begins. Well, we've now since heard that I heard ages ago, a while ago, about this shadow by the window. Ages ago I heard something about, someone say something about a shadow. She was dreaming. <laughs> I tell you, I wish I could be as, oh, what's up? I forgot that word again, where I can do so many jobs, right, do so many things, and multitask. I wish I could multitask like her. Christ, I'd get so much done in a day. I really would. Can you imagine me being on here, doing a live, and doing some ironing, and doing some cooking, and doing this, and doing... I'd get so much done in a day if I could do multitask like her. Right? But, last night, when we listened to that interview from the neighbour, she's, she's telling us how when the one neighbour left at seven in the morning, she saw her outside the house. Right? She left at seven to take her children to school. She saw her outside the house and said, you're okay, what's up? And Katie went into her story. Yes, she's a black belt as well. She sure is. Yeah. Right. And I know what they're capable of black belts. Because I used to do a martial arts years ago. I was not a black belt. 
I think I got, I moved up one bout. But I didn't do it for the bout. I was doing it more for exercise, just to keep myself fit. <laughs> Plus my children was doing it. So rather than sit there watching them, me and my husband just started doing it. And believe me, we was going up against people who did. We worked with people who got black belts. And God, they threw us around the mat like rag dolls. Honest to God. Anyway, so she said to this neighbour that at 11.30, now this is what's coming from her mouth, from Katie's mouth, to the neighbour, the day it happened. She said that Sebastian had gone to bed and about 11pm or 11, between 11 and 11.30 she heard a thud. Right? And she shouted through something like, was that you falling out of bed? No, Mum, just go to bed. Now, apparently, it was Sebastian who was telling his mum to go to bed. Now, she was saying this happened about 11, 11.30. But round about that time, and this is what I... I kind of, like, puzzled me. Just got me thinking. Around about the same time, all the lights in the house went off, right? And I'm going to pull up their road. I'm going to pull it up. Right? Because I don't see how a camera, a doorbell camera, can be that good. Because if it's that good, I want one. I'll put it on the outside of my living room window. I wouldn't have it as a bell. I'd use it as a camera. I'm spying on you. Right? Because apparently some camera picked up... Right, I'm just getting all in. So that I can get my little man down there before I go to check with him. Right. Let's get rid of this picture, I Minnie, mean, even though I love that picture of all of him. Um, I'm going to take you to Google Maps, right? Because the neighbour said at 11.30, all the lights went off. About 11 o'clock, the lights in his bedroom went on and off, then on again, then off again. That was it. Then about 11.30... All the lights went off in the house. Right? Now, there's the house. There's their house. Right? So, let's have a look. Right? I want to know what ring doorbell was it. Because no way was it this ring doorbell. There's no way that house with a ring doorbell would get, catch, those bedroom, the bedroom lights going on and off and all the lights going out. I'm sorry, it wouldn't. However, it might have been, hold on, let's just go down a little bit. It could have been, I mean, it seems improper, it could be this house. Because look where their door is. Right? And look where the bedroom windows are. So, could be that house has caught the lights going on and off, and that the house went in full blackness. Well, I'm sorry, but when you're going to bed, your house lights do go off, don't they? Your house goes dark, black. So, am I to think that everyone, when I, I look at my living room window or my bedroom window, and I can see the other block of flats across from me, Everyone whose lights go out, I said, oh, what's going on in that house? The lights have all gone off. Oh. You know what I mean? No, the lights have all gone off because they're going to bed. Right? That's what I think. But apparently, it's, it's on camera that they're seeing his bedroom light. This here? Just here. I... Let's see if I can get in a bit. Further. Let's see if I can just get in a 
bit further. See? He's bedroom light self. And then they said his light went on and off about 11 a.m. 11 p.m. Then about 11.30 she heard, about that time she heard the thud. Then at about 11.30 all the lights in the house went out, it went dark. But then they're seeing a shadow in this window. And as I said, the only house that would pick that up, now I'm going like that, so I'm going across at the road sort of thing, right? To try and get the house that would pick it up, and the only house that would pick it up would be that one. But they've got a big tree in their garden. They've got a big tree in their. You can tell by the way the shadow is where the tree is to the door. Right? So, how on earth? Plus, they've got these trees here. How on earth are they going to be able to see anything? Unless the door is just over from that tree, possibly. But that's the house, I think, had the doorbell camera or house footage of the lights going on and off. And saw a shadow in the window. Right? Now, yes, we spoke about this and last night, and one of them in chat was saying, I turn all my lights off when I want to look out the window. I said, yeah, I've done that to be nosy, you know what I mean? But I still don't stand full on in my window. I still stand to the side so that you can't see me. If I want to see something happening outside, if it, if it, it was feathering your lips, true, true, yeah. So... As I'm looking at this picture, and I think it would come past that tree, to be honest with you. It would be coming past that tree. But you've got to be that house to get those, to get the windows. Right? To get those windows. Like the bedroom window, the, the front window. Thing. It's got to be that house. It's got to be that door. So, and I thought, yeah, well, I've done that, but... I'm not stood in my window looking out, unless I'm not looking for anything specific. I'm just looking out my window just to be see what's going on, who's out there, any cars coming, anyone, anyone having an argument anywhere, no, any drunks anywhere, no. You know what I mean? If I want to be really nosy. But if I hear an argument, then I don't stand in my window looking out my window. I stand to one side and I'm looking out the corner of the window. Right, so, perhaps Kate, whoever it was, who was standing in this window, hold on, let me try and get better angle, better angle, better angle, right, whoever it was standing in that window, oh God, get in there, right, it stood there, looking out that window in pitch black. It's dark out there, as you know. You, we know it's dark out there. We've seen people ride, drive through that area in, like, March time. So it's still dark when they're doing the ride, drive throughs So unless she didn't realise by turning off her all her lights, she probably thought no one would see her. Or they pro or he, whoever it was, probably thought no one would see them standing at the window. But why would you stand at your window? You know what I mean? You got time to go and stand at your window, but you've got no time to go and check on your son, who where you just heard a thud come from his room, where you know he's got uh, that fluid on his brain or something, whatever it is, where you know if he hits his head hard, it could kill him. But you hear this thud and all you do is shout through, shout, was that you, Bubba, falling out of bed? No, Mum. I'll get to sleep then. You don't go and check on him. 
But she said he went to bed at nine and at ten o'clock. That's when she said, but she's telling the neighbour on the 26th in the morning. It might have been, might have been Chris scoping out the neighbour to see if it was okay to carry George Sebastian to an unidentified parked car. Well, we'll be getting on to that in a minute, that parked car. I don't know why I've not seen this video before now. You know what I mean? I've not seen this clip of that video. Why? I don't know. Hmm. And I always seem to come across these little bits of information after, after I finish my live. Anyway, so it could have been Chris, but... Yeah, he could have come up the back way, but if that was the case, the car would have been parked there a lot longer. Right? The woman said the car was only parked there for a few minutes. Right? It wasn't parked there long. It was only parked there for a few minutes. So for him to park his car down the bottom of the road, come to the house, check around, make sure everything's clear, and then carry Sebastian out again. Would have been more than a few minutes. And what I don't understand as well is they didn't want people to see him. Why the hell did they take a torch? They must have known that house on the corner had a camera. Everyone can see that house on the corner. Right? You can see that. But while I'm here, I want to show you some of Right? We're going down the road now to that house. And I must admit, I'd be very annoyed if I was this neighbour, if that video, if that was my video and it got released without my permission. There's the one camera. Right? There's one. Playing as down. Move along. Move along, everyone. Is that not a camera? Or is it an old camera? But that looks like a camera to me. Now, that one... Oh, God, where am I going? That one is pointing... When I can get... For God's sake. Where am I going? Come back. I'm trying to get, I like to. That one is more this way, right? It's pointing this way. Now, in a minute, I'm going to show you the camera footage. And one of the clips is I've not seen this clip before until last night. Not seen it before. Now, from what I understand, when the neighbour spoke, she said it was parked here, round here, on the corner. But in this footage that we're going to be seeing, it's parked, right? Let's have a look at that camera again. Where is he? There's the camera. It's parked round here. Right? Now, I've always said, from the first time I've seen that video with the lights, I always said it was from this camera, this house. I knew what house it was before it was disclosed. I knew what house. Everyone was saying it was the back, the common area by their house. It wasn't behind their house. It was here. And if you see, there's a little dip, right? How it dips in. And that's the path that light was going. That's the path that light was going. It wasn't on here, it was coming along here. And it was trying to hide from cameras. And it did a flipping good job until it got to round about here <laughs> and got caught on a camera. Now, when they said 
It was a garbage truck, I was going, hmm, really? Right, no. Those two big lights we see in there is from this house here. This house. And I'll show you the lights I'm wrong about. Oh, I've got to go back again. Right. Oh, God's sake, ain't she? Oh, I'll get this right in a minute. Um, there was no ruckus going on because you think it's February, no leaves on the tree, but there's loads of branches. Even with a slight breeze or a wind, these branches are going to be going all over the place. Right? Above these garages are two lights. And if you notice, all the houses around here with the garages have lights. Look, two big lights there. Bump, bump. Two big lights. They're not up here on the wall, like most are. They're here. So when you see that video of a ruckus, it wasn't. If these two lights, right, and these trees blowing about in the wind. And when you zoom into anything, really, 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 really zoom in on anything, you can make it look like whatever you want it to look like, right? Because they kept saying it was the garage, their garages, and I thought, it can't be their garages, because I know for a fact the footage came from that house on the corner. And you cannot see their garages from that house, you can't. But you can see these two lights. So that's what I think those two big lights are. It's not a garbage truck. Right? And they came along this little dip here. All the way from their back, back of their house. All the way along, they came along that dip. Whoever it was, could have been Sebastian on his own? Leaving? We don't know. Could he have been arranging to meet with someone here? We don't know. Right? Could it be CP carrying Sebastian? We don't know. Right? The other light is like over here somewhere. So, right, I'd say about here. When you think that camera's there, it's going to be about here. Right? And I'm no doubt to have a camera they've got there. Unless that one doesn't work. I don't know. But it's definitely this area. Definitely. It's not... It is two lights. There were two lights. I don't care what anyone says. No, there was two lights. I don't believe that garbage truck. I didn't believe it. But I only... I went by it because Seth said it was. And I thought, okay... Seth says it is, I'll go with that. And since then, I've not talked about it until someone put that video out about the ruckus. And I thought, no, no, I can't have this. I'm going on. I've got to talk about these lights. That is not a ruckus. It's not even their house. You know what I mean? The camera isn't even facing on their house. So it couldn't have been their house. So, we get that far. We get all that. Right? And then... Oh, no. Comments, let's have a look. I'll just pop that comment up. When it decides to go up. Come on. But it could have been Chris carrying Sebastian. But as I said, the car was only there for a few minutes. Only parked around here for a few minutes and then it left. It wasn't there long. So whoever it had was like... And then don't forget, she'll, we'll see another picture, video. And this is another video I said we never got to see. Because when Nick Barris was talking about that video, 
He kept going on about it. And if you watch, you'll see the light run back towards the house. But we never got to see that. We never got to see that. But we will tonight. We will tonight. We're going to see all three videos again. And the woman whose channel it is... Hold on. I can't think now. Crimes... Big time crime stories. Right? So shout out to pay big time crime stories, okay? Downloads. And um, go over, join her channel, subscribe to her. She comes out with some great stuff. Right? And it's only 6 minutes 51. So we're going to watch... I'm going to let her talk because she can tell you what's going on between the videos and everything. But... Let's just get this up here ready. And I sat there last night, and I'll tell you something. Oh, not again. No. No. I've got a habit tonight of clicking on the wrong clipping buttons. Right. Um, once again, I got comfy watching something on YouTube. And what happened? I fell asleep on, on the sofa. I got up about 5 a.m. this morning and went to my bed. Oh, this is ridiculous, Angie. You've got a bed, you need to sleep in your bed. I don't know. Right. Is it going? Yeah. Right. But we're going to watch this video and it will show you. Oh, you can get up there. Um. I did, I thought, how come I've never seen this part of the video before? Right? But now it makes sense because I remember it was like when the light, we seen that light video at the bottom on the right hand, left hand corner of that screen, you see some light up. You see something light up, and I thought, oh, there's a heat source there, some light. Some lights are on. The camera's just picked up this light source. It all could have been to create a scent. The parked car had Sebastian's shoes. Kathy had Sebastian and her husband to take shoes to Chris and Kate in a bag, but rinse the bag in their pond. Hmm, that is interesting. Mm. They did a good clean-up job, put it that way. They did a good clean-up job as to make it look like he walked out that house, sort of thing, in a way, but not good enough. Because the fact that he walked out that house without leaving a scent meant he flew. He, he got wings and flew. Yeah. Is that good? Told you, there's so many good people in this case. It's unbelievable. So many mysterious things as well coming out now. Thanks to the neighbour. So, it says the car, the park, it could, could have been to create a scent. The park car had Sebastian's shoes. Kathy had Sebastian and had her husband take shoes to Chris and Kate in a bag but rinse the bag in the pond. Hmm. Well, the bag, they could have just thrown in the uh, rubbish. You know what I mean? Just, could have just thrown it in the rubbish. The bins were out the front. But I don't know about it get caught on camera, wouldn't they? But I can't see... I've never, ever known anyone who's been... Trying to move a body, right? Take the shoes away from them. You've always found the shoes nearby the body or somewhere by the body. You know what I mean? Then Kate brought shoes home. When you see flashlights go home, they are they both are in security. Yeah. Oh, they're dressed in black, okay. Oh, yeah. 
I she didn't go to bed at 12 o'clock. I'll tell you now. The fact that she was saying how she was so sleepy when she's on the phone call and that she went to bed at 10 o'clock, uh, 12 o'clock, and yet obviously I went to sleep. Why did you have to say that, Katie? It's obvious that you went to sleep if you went to bed. Well, no, I go to bed and I don't go to sleep. I can lie there for hours. My mind's going over time. I swear to God, my cat's tonight. They do it every night, I come on alive. They start. So, she did not go to bed at 12 o'clock. She didn't. I can go to you now. I bet you now she did not go to sleep at all. I bet you she stayed up all night. She stayed up all night. But then again, she'd be in the dark, wouldn't she? Because her neighbours would have seen the lights coming on and off. Um, perhaps she did go to her bed. Perhaps she did go to her bed. But Chris was in a foul mood that Monday when he went to work. And that's why one of the his, the people who works there put, uh, told his site manager about him. And the site manager pulled him off the crane between 10 and 11 a.m. in the morning. Excuse me, you just had a phone call this morning off your wife telling you your stepson was missing. Why the hell was he going to work? The bag of shoes must have been why dogs hit on dumpster. They threw the bag in dumpster. Ooh, possibly. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. That is good, Karen. That is good. Because there's nothing in that dumpster. They was obviously looking for something in that dumpster. But they wouldn't be looking for a carrier bag, would they? Unless it had blood on or something like that that stood out. Oh, this bag's got blood on. You know what I mean? But if it's just a normal bag, like a, a trash bag or an empty bag, then they're not going to take much notice of that, are they? Hmm. And it did say the dogs picked up on something at that. I remember hearing someone saying, the dog they had at that landfill picked up on something. Perhaps he picked up on that bag, but because it was just a bag, they just thought, nothing of it. A false hit. It's a false hit. Would have left a scent if they brought it back in car. Yeah. Yeah, it would have, Karen. Hmm. I tell you, this is why I love having this chat, because... There's others in the bushes who aren't coming through and talking and giving us their opinions, right? Um, so, we're going to watch this, okay? And I found this very interesting. Hang on, just get past this. Come on. Come on. Christ's sake, how long? Right. Come on. Right, here we are. Let's get the sound.
the ice skater in the very first few Jager practice. Hmm. Oh. Oh, that is not a garbage truck. Sorry, that is not a garbage truck. You can see the tail of the car, the tail end of the car. The front of the car. That's like a SUV sort of car. Yep, you can see the tail lights, the headlights, tail lights. You can see the, you know what I mean? You can see the, the, the sort of outline sort of thing of the car. Oh, yeah, it's possible only one minute. Yeah, it probably is one flashlight. At least this is the one I've never seen before. Yeah. No. Yep. That's what I said. No, I don't. Right? She's literally said the same as what I said. Now, if anyone wants to go back on my videos of Sebastian, go back to the first time I showed that video of the lights. You will hear me say this and show you on Google Maps where I believe those lo that camera was from. You know what I mean? You'll hear me say it all. But also, because it's zoomed in, right, I'm going to show you something. Where is it at here? Right, I'm going to go back. Right. Now see here, you've got them two lights. Well, don't forget, Nick Berry's, the video he showed was zoomed in. So we wasn't getting 
all of this. Right, we wasn't getting all of these cars here. We was just literally zoomed in past them cars over to there, yeah? And when you see the original, that first video that Nick Bear has put out, and I'm going, I'm going to see if I can find you. Right? I think it might, would it be on? Hmm. Would it be on my face, on his Facebook? I don't know. But, as he zoomed in on those two lights, right? Um... As you're watching them two lights, in the bottom hand corner, left hand corner, it lit up and I thought, wow, what was that? What was that? And it even looked like there was someone walking towards whatever that was. And I went, oh my God, there's someone else there. Right, so I'm going to try and find that original video. Right. which Nick Bear has put out. And I thought, oh my God, there's another person there. What is that light? What is that light? Now it falls into place when you see that video, you've seen that video of the car. Right? When you've seen that video of the car, it falls into place. Oh, I'm going to hate them to search through Facebook pages. So, now I know what that light is on that light source is on the corner of that one video. And it's very you post more than all. What do you on Facebook? Hold on. Is that it? No. No. My mark, no, still got marks. We've got a long way to go. <clears throat> <coughs> Bear with me, I will find you. That's Jim, I'll tell them. More? She took it off. Why have I gone past it? Hmm. Surely he hasn't removed it. Yeah, he's moved it. He's removed it because it's not on his Facebook page. Right? So, if we go back to the one with the car, Mm -hmm. Let's just find this one with the car. Right, I've just stopped it there. 
because I know for a fact, and I'm gonna find you. I'll find you on my channel if need be. Because I know I've got it on mine. And I will find it. Alright, come on. Come on. But I've just stopped it there because that is that light source that you I saw on that very first video. And no one picked up on that light source. And then all of a sudden someone picked up on it. Right? Someone else picked up on it. I'm thinking, hmm. What is going on? Where, why is there a light source? And why does it look like there's someone else walking towards the car? Right? It really looked like there's someone walking. So, I'm sorry, you, I will get it for you. It's on my page, I know it is. Unless it's deleted it and it's been deleted off my page then. But I know I shared it to my page. It was such a long time ago now that so much has happened since then that so much has happened. Oh, come on. Come on. So, I don't know what you all think of that video. Chris got in the car with the driver and headed back to work almost two hours early. Yeah. He could be seen going back to the trailer at half five. That is something he could not be seen doing. If he was seen going back to the trailer at half five, that would have been, oh, where have you been? Why? But then again, would they not have seen him leave the trailer park? Come on now, find this little video for me. God's sake. So, I don't know, I don't know if Chris was involved. He's involved. He's definitely involved. But I don't think he was the one who inflicted it. I think he's just involved because, oh, what's that? No. I think he's just involved because he's helped. You know what I mean? And the lies him and Katie have come out with since are unbelievable. That's why I said I would never, if my channel was bigger, I'd have no problem having Katie on my channel if I had a bigger channel. You know what I mean? No problem. Right? I'd be nice to her, I'd be courteous, mother to mother, gritting my teeth, noting all the red flags she's telling us. Right? But Chris, you know, I could not have him on my on a live. I really couldn't. He would just literally, I'd literally flip it on him. I'd literally flip on him. I'm still trying. To get this. Come on. God. I wish Facebook would scroll a lot quicker. So. <clears throat> I want to see that film when it comes out, Ezra. Come on. Don't keep jumping on me. Because that looks like a good, I swear to God, it's this job on me once more, I'm going to smack it well. <sighs> no, that's a fight. That's a fight. Oh, 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 come on. I swear to God, Facebook. Figure out a faster way to scroll down your page, please, Facebook, because this is... 
is annoying. Trying to find something. And I can't find it because Facebook is being a pain and keeps stopping when I'm trying to scroll down my page. Come on. I swear to God, I'm going to smack this. Oh, God. Back off. The other day, I was in um, Tesco's with my grandson. And I was getting so peed off with the self scans. And he's going, Calm down, Gran. Calm down. Calm down, Gran. <laughs> I just want to get out of this shop. I just need to get out of this shop. My anxiety is going up to how, you know what I mean? Come on, where is it? I can't be getting close to it. <sighs> where the hell is it? I swear to God, just do my head in. Come on. You know what, I can't be asked with it. Facebook is doing my head in now. Just stopped on me all together. He had his truck parked somewhere away from any cameras, never went back to campsite till work sent him home. Hmm. Yeah. I did think perhaps his mother or stepfather come and come down and picked him up and took him back. But like, it's like a lot of travelling, you know what I mean? Like, it's like seven hours travelling for that person who's driving. You know, I just took the box somewhere away from any cameras. We went back to campsite till work. Oh, I don't think he even went back to the campsite then. I think he just come home. He didn't get home till half one in the afternoon. And if he left the campsite about between 10 and 11, that would give him the time to get home. Anyway, what I'm going to try and do on here then. Right, see how that lit up the car? Yeah. Will you shut up? No. Shut up now. God, this guy turned off, man. I can learn to my son on next week when he's looking after you. When I was watching that video and you seen these lights that was coming around here, yeah? This lit up. And it looked then, it looked like someone was walking to this thing. This this thing that lit up on the screen. I wish I could find the first video that they put out. The one where it was zoomed in. I know it's on my Facebook page, and I, I can't find it. It's just not letting me find it. Right? And I said, oh, my God, look at that. That's lit up. Why is that lit up? What's made something light up like that? And as I looked at it, it looked like someone walking to the car. So the light from the car hit the, whoever it was walking to the car. Right? So did that person who had the light, that first light that was moving, hand something over to someone else and then they've got in the car with that, with whatever. But that is definitely a car. That is definitely a car. See? Lights coming on there. Definitely a car. 
And this light here, what I saw, that's what you saw on the bottom of that camera, of that first zoomed in picture. Right? And IGG. So, when I seen it last night, I thought, oh my God, it's, wh where was this video when, before, right? And why did I not see, like, Nick Bell says, and then you see the light quickly going back to the house, and I sat there watching that first video, and I'm going, I don't see no light going back to the house. I didn't. I'm thinking, you're not showing us all the video. And you didn't show us all the video. And he, he, to be honest with you, he may have took it off his page because, like that woman said, that lady whose video he was took from was not happy because no one gave them permission. No one gave them permission. Are you seeing that one, Gigi Karen? Yeah, so it just got me because I thought, where's that light source coming from? You know what I mean? Where the hell is this light source coming from at the bottom of this video? Where's that light source? Now we know where it's coming from. It was coming from that car. And that's the car the neighbour was on about, on the corner. Right, get back to map. On the corner, parked here. On the corner of Stafford Road and Kelling Lane. See, when you think of corner, you think here. You probably think like here, right? But for that camera to catch it, it had to have been where it was, here. Had to have been here. Right, so here. Oh, oh let's do that. So there, about there. Because then she, whoever it is comes along here, hangs whatever over, they get in the car, drive away. They've had to turn around because you can see... Oh, hang on. Right? Sorry, sorry. I'm bagged at that. I keep forgetting that. They've got in the car. But from the angle of that video, right, the car... Hang on, I'll show you. Right? The car was facing the other way, going up Stafford Court. Because that's the headlights. Right? That's the headlights, so it's facing up Stafford Court. There's the rear lights. So it's facing up. So... Yeah. It moved towards that car. And I think why it was, because... Let's have a look. You've got that dip, yeah? You've got a car parked here, yeah? Got a car parked here. Someone's coming along this dip. I think whoever was in that car has come along. She's handed whatever, or they've handed whatever, over to someone in this car. They've then took it off her, got in the car, could have gone up here and just took me in there and gone. It wasn't there long. It said it was only there a few minutes. And it wasn't an Uber. Because why would an Uber park there? Right? I, we don't use Ubers in the UK. Well, we can, but I don't. Right? I just use normal taxis. They're good enough for me. And they charge a lot less. Right, so whoever it was, I said, just coming along that dip. Right, I said it. 
So they've handed him, they she's, could have literally just passed him up to whoever was up on the top here, passed whatever up to him. They've turned around, jumped in the car, because it isn't that far distance from there to there where the car would have been. Jumped in the car, up, turned around, gone. Yeah. Now, she said people had, uh, Bobby said car backed up. Oh, it backed up. Okay. So it backed up all the way down. Fair enough. Me, personally, I'd have gone and turned around and gone. You've already caught on camera. So you, <laughs> you know what I mean? You've been sitting outside your house with a flipping camera pointing at you. So to back up makes it look even more suspicious, I think. But she did also say there's also more video footage that has been handed in to law enforcement. But they're not saying anything on that, are they? They're not selling us anything. Now, if they want these rumours to stop, all they've got to do is keep us informed. Right? Just give us a little tidbit, a piece of bread here and there. Throw us a piece of bread, soggy bread, you know what I mean? Just throw some soggy bread every so often. Right? Now, why can't they, like, if that footage of him of him putting the rubbish out is so dark and so blurred that is a cul de sac there this road here right i'm done i'm not sharing the tab i'm on i am not i will right i'm done it'll come up this road here, so right, my screen, what you're seeing is a delayed from what I put on my screen. So, see, that's a cul-de-sac. That's a cul-de-sac. Right? Now, if I'd been a driver, I'd have just gone up there, turned round, and down again, and away. You know what I mean? But I can't see the car, because if that car was parked here, round about here, yeah? Round about here. That is a long way for a car to reverse back. Even if it was here, it's still a long way. Right, so it's a long way. So you say the car was parked there, which I think it was round about there. Because that is where you start coming out of that dip a bit there. Because you see how it comes up higher there. You start coming out of that dip a bit. So I say the car was parked round about here. But when you think it's still a long way to reverse back. Me, I would have gone up, turned round and gone. You could have done that in seconds. Two void cameras. <laughs> bit light, isn't it? Surely they realise this house has got a camera on. You can walk past this house and see the flipping camera. You can walk past it and see it. I'm not sure if that's a camera. It looks like one to me. It looks like a sensor one. A sensor one. See this? See? That looks like a camera, a sensor camera.
was definitely a camera. But they've got a lot of cars and boats and whatever on there. So that camera is like that one. But there's this cap sensor here. But it's this camera, I do believe. It's this one over here. This is the camera that caught their car. Um, get this up. All right. Caught that car sitting there. Round about here. All right. Perhaps it did reverse back, you know what I mean? I'm not going to lie, if they've got it on camera, like, reverse back, then it reverse back, you know what I mean? I can't deny it. They probably did, because then again, it isn't that far to reverse back if it was parked round about here. If it was parked round about here, it's not that far. Yeah, they probably did reverse back. But too late, use cork on candy camera. We've got you. And try telling us that is a garbage truck now, law enforcement, because that is not a garbage truck. This is not a garbage truck. Because not only like a garbage truck, right? would have its lights on continuously because it's dark. They need to see where they're going, so their lights would be on continuously as they're driving around. Not where they suddenly just pop, pop a switch and the lights come on. Right. Here we go. Here we go. I'm going to share it now. Oh. Share it now, okay? I'm going to go back again. Bump. Lights on. Boom. That is not a trash truck. A trash, a garbage truck, whatever you call it. I is a lot, hold on, oh God, what am I doing? It's a lot bigger than that. You can see the back of the car. You can see the front of the car. It's a lot bigger than that. And the back end would be lit up a lot more because it's got the mechanical arms on. There'd be lights, big lights on, on the back of that truck because it has mechanical arms to lift the bins in, right? So it'd be lit up pretty well. Katie has the ability to jam cameras. You can buy them on Amazon. Right, well, the woman said, who lives in this house, right, she did say, a, cam a timing on her camera, on the recordings, were off. But she managed, she went through that footage and she managed to get the timing, not the, exactly, but she knew what time the garbage truck come, what time the school bus went, everything. So this that happened before the garbage truck come. That incident with that car sitting there was before the gar car garbage truck. So when they tried to tell us, right, that, oh no, those lights come from a road up here, that back road at the back here. Right, oh, I'm not showing you again, sorry. It'll come around in a minute. When they tells you these 
garbage. Right at the back of these houses is another road. Right at the back. Runs along the back. They tried to say the lights were coming from the garbage truck at this road here. And I'll show you what road they're wrong about. Right. Come on. You've got Stafford Court, right? And over the back. Oh. You've got Honeysuckle Drive, right? Those trying to say that this camera here on this house was that good? Was that good? They picked up the camera, the lights off the gar garbage truck along here. But yeah, you you can buy them j jammers, jam things, whatever they call them, off off Amazon. She's a technical. She just security. Don't you think she'd have some sort of a jam, one of them jamming machines already to jam signals? Have you ever thought that's why she wouldn't let them search her work truck? Because she hadn't got permission of her works to do so. And by the time law enforcement had got the warrant or whatever they needed to search that truck, she's been in that truck and removed whatever was in there. If she had a jammer and she's kept it in that van, she had time to get it out of that van Right, and move it. So she could have used a jammer. But they're trying to say this little camera down here. Right, let me take it off the screen so you can see. Uh, just take this off. They're trying to say that this little house here on the corner with their little camera was able to pick up the trash lights of the truck from the garbage truck coming along there. And I thought, whoa, if, the, if they got a camera that good, I want one of them. I can see for miles as it is where I live. Could you imagine how far I could see if I had one of them cameras? Ooh. I'd be able to see into people's houses two, three miles away from where I live if I had one of them cameras. Mm. Well, say a mile away. So I knew then when they tried to say it was... A, coming along that road, the garbage truck was coming along that road, and this camera picked it up. So I thought, no way, I'm sorry. No, it's not going to pick them lights up. It's not. The lights we saw was the car, which was parked. Hang on, I'm just going down to it. <coughs> which was parked here. There's that drive. So the car, I'd say, was about there. Let's drop my little man there. Yeah. I'd say the car was parked around about here. Whoever that was in that ditch passed something to someone. They had then got in the car, reversed back. It isn't that far, actually. It looks far, but it isn't. Reverse back, round the corner and down the road and off they go. No, it's... No, law enforcement tried telling us it's a garbage truck again. And I will personally pay for a ticket to get on a flight to come over there and put my boot right up your jack seat. Because you're telling us lies. And the more you lie to us, the more we dig. We dig, and we dig, and we find this evidence out. And we find you lying to us. Why? Just tell us. 
We can't give you this information. Just tell us it's a criminal investigation. Just clear Seth. You've got his information. You know where he was. Clear him or arrest him. If I was Seth, I would come right up to your door of your station, your sheriff's office, and say, clear me or arrest me. Because this isn't looking good on him. He works for the law enforcement. And he's got a finger put he's got fingers pointing at him. It doesn't look good and it's not fair. This is his job. This is his career. You are messing about with law enforcement. Sumner County, TBI, whoever, if you are doing anything, get off your backside and start clearing Seth. We know where he was. We know that Chris was at work at 5.30, but we don't know where he was between... I can't even say... I have to say, you don't even know where he was between 9.30 and 5.30. 9.30 Sunday night and 5.30 Monday morning. You don't know where he was. He's got no alibi. The only alibi he's got is Katie. And the only alibi Katie's got is Chris. That three-hour phone call. That's their alibi. Wow. Wow. That's all I can say. If, if you're going on that for their alibi, then pff, I'm glad I, you, you, you're you not the police that work over here in the UK. Because if that was the case, we'd have so many criminals getting off. We really would. So, clear Seth or arrest him. You've got his information. You know where he is. He was on camera from the moment he went in. Even before he went into work, when he pulled up in his car and started walking towards the building, he'd be on camera. So you've got him from the moment he got out of the car to the moment he went in the building. All that time he was at work. And from the moment he left the building to the moment he got in his car and drove off. Clear him or arrest him. Simple as that. Katie, arrest. She was the, she is the sole person who was there. We now know there was a car. Parked around, where's the house again? Parked around here. Parked around, just here, around there. Right, around here, there was a car. We know that now. Try saying that isn't a car. Go on. Tell us that isn't a car, law enforcement. Because I dare you to. I dare you to. Because the more you tell us that was not a car and that was a garbage truck, you are going to be the laughing stock. So now, do your job and do it properly. We haven't got the powers to make arrests. You know what I mean? Everything we find on YouTube, everything we dig up is circumstantial. Everything they say on their lives are circumstantial. We've caught her on a lie so many times, this is unbelievable. She lied in the very first interview when she said um, she fell asleep at 10 o'clock and woke up at 12 and then went to bed. There was nothing then about hearing Sebastian. No, Sebastian went to bed at 9, she fell asleep at 10. That I don't believe. She needs us to believe that she was asleep from 10 or dozing on and off because she was then corrected herself by Chris. She was talking to Chris on the phone. And you've got proof that she was talking to Chris. Well, you've got proof of a three-hour phone call. And I think when you had their phones and you looked at their phone log and you looked at the statement she gave you on the Monday, you thought, hold on, she told us she was asleep at 10. But here we've got her on a phone call from quarter to 10, from 9.40 summer to 12 o'clock. 
And I think then they've gone back to there and said there's a discrepancy. And that's when Chris has said, yeah, we was on a phone call and she kept falling asleep. Right? Okay. I could quite believe that. But when she throws in the fact that she was her then reading a book, uh, was she reading a book or falling asleep, love? Come on. You can't be doing reading a book, falling asleep, and talking to Chris on the phone. Oh, and then also telling your son to go to sleep because you heard him always at 10 o'clock. But now we find out that your first, very, very first time you spoke to anyone before law enforcement, you told a neighbour that Sebastian was still awake at 11. Right? The neighbor, uh, someone's camera caught his light going on and off about 11-ish. Right? And neighbor, some camera caught someone standing in your dining room in the pitch black looking out the window. Who are they looking for? Because they can't, whoever it is, they can't afford to be driving up the road because they get caught on camera. So you can't be looking for a car. You're looking to make sure it's clear. Right? But we don't know when that car was there. We know it was there before the trash men come. We know that much. So it's sometime before between 12 and the trash come round there about one. The woman up the road who lived up the Kelling Road said it comes round about, was it 10 to 6, did she say? So it will come round by their road and up their road about, I'd say, about half five. So we know it's between 12 and 5. All right, so what was she waiting for? Why did she turn all the lights off at half eleven? Why did her house go dark at half eleven? That doesn't make sense to me. Especially when she said she didn't go to bed till twelve. So why would you wander around your house in the pitch black for half an hour? And then, oh, I think I'll go to bed now, it's pitch black. You just turned all your lights off half an hour ago, love. I'd have been in bed by then. Probably fast asleep by then. Because when my head hits that pillow, I'm gone. But then I wake up about an hour or so later, but I'm gone. I don't have trouble falling asleep. I have trouble staying asleep. Right, so let's see what law enforcement say about this now. Because everyone's going to be talking about this car. Everyone. I've seen several people today talking about this car. Several. So try telling us that's a garbage truck. Try telling us. Right? And then, as I said, I'm going, where am I? It's doing now. Right, let's just have a look. Hey, Dippy Bird. It's been a while, yeah. I can't watch any more about this. It's all a joke. Nothing about Sebastian. Excuse me. This is about Sebastian. Excuse me, Dippy Bird. I'm all about Sebastian. Hmm. Thank you. No, I must admit there is a lot of um, a lot of nastiness going about on YouTube. A lot of nastiness, and as I've said before, the reason we're all here. It's for one person. And that person is this lad. This lad. This lad. That's what we're all here for. Nothing else. Right? But when law enforcement are telling us that those lights that we saw <laughs> was a garbage truck, they must think we've got S-H-I-T in our eyes. 
because I only, I backed off away from those lights. I really did. I backed off away from it when Chris Seth said he'd seen the full video and it showed a garbage truck. Why did he say that? Was he told to say that by law enforcement to get us to back off from that? Because this is critical information here. Right? Now, if he just said, look, we can't talk about those lights. That video should never have been released. I think a lot of people would have understood that more then. And then backed off and said, okay, we can't talk about those lights. And backed away. But to get someone to lie to us, someone they knew we would trust, like Seth, that's, that's not on. That's not on. Right? But there is a lot of nastiness and it's all been turned on. Set, uh, onto Seth. And I'm sorry. Oh, did, did, <laughs> did you watch it this morning where he's trying to say that wasn't on the actual show? Ron, and he's showing us the recording of the actual show and it never come up. I thought, well, it come up on that girl's, in that girl's name. It come up on that girl's TikTok name. Right? So, have you edited? Because I noticed very quickly after that happened, literally within a minute or so after that happened, right? Not much longer, because it wasn't very long. Right? That ended. It all ended. Well, we'll call it a day there then, shall we? And they finished it. Bump. So I think it was edited. The one we're watching today has been edited. Yeah, I can see that, Dippy, but you know what? He was just hoping that uh, Chris and Katie would work with him. And he knew how people felt towards Chris and Katie. Hold on, I've just heard some. Hold on. So I thought someone was in my bathroom then because I heard some, like, you know, don't think I'm being rude, but you know when you go to the toilet and you hear someone doing a pee-pee on the toilet? It sounded like that. Even my other cat sitting on the sofa looked up as to say, what was that? I've gone in the bathroom and my other cat coming out the toilet, out the bathroom, I thought, well, I know he hasn't been on the toilet because the toilet seat is still down. So I'm checking the bath thing. I'm thinking, where did that noise come from? Weird. Right? And what he's trying to... This is Seth. This is Seth. You've got to think of Seth, how he talks. Right? When he says, you can all F off. Right? It's like, you're either here for Sebastian or you're not. I put, put money... In which I didn't. I said I was done thing, but I wasn't because it's about Sebastian, but we'll never get another penny out. Yeah. But you did it in good faith. You did it to help Seth. And that's good. You know what I mean? That's good, Dippy, that you help Seth. But I think since Tony come on, and one new choo but it's correct what he said. He said it from the very beginning. As soon as Tony coming on the scenes, he said, this case will go downhill from now. And it did. It went through downhill. 
Now, we watched him on an interview. He popped up on a channel the other night, yeah? And I'm... But he has got a, a habit of over-talking, Seth has. It's like, when he t talks about something, he goes into a lot of detail. Detail we don't need to know about. Right? So, he just needs to keep his answers short and sweet. He's just got to learn to keep his answers so short and sweet. Don't go into any detail. We don't need to know all that detail because that is what people are twisting. People will now go and twist every word he said on that interview. And that's what I don't like. And I don't agree with everything he said. I didn't like how he told everyone to F off. But I could see where he was coming from as well. I could also see where he was coming from. So I, I let that go. Because I knew KTNCP was not going to work with him. I knew that. And everyone else knew that. But Seth was just so wanting to work with him. Did you see what I wrote on JLR's Twitter account about Dick Dong? No, I haven't been on his Twitter account today. <laughs> I'm going to have to go on there. I did say earlier I'd go on my uh, Twitter account and I haven't been on today. I'll have to go on. Uh, tell me he's nice and polite, Dippy. <laughs> But, either way, what happened on that TikTok? Okay, please, copy and paste it. <laughs> as long as it's clean. <laughs> <coughs> but, um, I think Tony's got to drop back. He's got to, because he's not helping this case. He's not helping this case at all. He just keeps dropping. And I, don't, I think, I don't know if it was actually him doing that or whether he put something up over his screen. You know what I mean? To make it look. I think he put something over his screen. I think he put it up over his, onto his screen. And he's trying to say someone had uh Got hold of the live, right, and put it up, and then put it out with that on. Don't work like that, right? So like, someone coming on my live, right? They could download my live, yes, and then they could add something to it, right? But when they put it out again. It won't be put out in my name. It will be put out in their name. So how could someone take their live, right, a live stream on TikTok, do whatever they did to it on it, and then put it out under that TikTok, TikToker's name? I think it was Tony that done it. I don't think he personally whipped it out and put it in front of the camera. I think he got one of these, like, little thing, like, uh, something that goes onto your screen, that you can put over onto your screen. I think he done that because it's literally there for a second. A second. If you blink, you'd miss. But then again, it wasn't much to look at anyway, so... <laughs> But no, it's all gone to kaput, and it's got to stop. This nastiness that is out there. I don't like Chris, right? I really don't. But I will not go after him like some people are going after Seth. I will not do that. I can't stand the guy, but I'm not going to go after him and call him a P 
and all that lot. That's just downright disgusting. And I'm not surprised he's had a cease and desist on certain YouTubers. I'm not surprised if they are saying things like that. And I can imagine they are. Right? And they're using Sebastian's name at the same time as putting out this file content. And if I do a video and it's not about Sebastian, I don't have anything on here about Sebastian. I don't have his picture up here, I don't have his name in here, nothing. And when it's, I come on about Sebastian, it is about Sebastian. And like tonight, I'm just trying to figure out that car that was parked around here somewhere. And I, the lights came along this path here. But see how it comes up? Here. So I think she maybe walked up this bit and passed him over. Because let's have a look. Yeah, yeah. I think she's walked along here, up here, passed him over into a car. That person was waiting outside the car. Because I'll tell you now, on that very first video, I'm going to find it and I'll show you. Because um, there's some people on here now that haven't, on you, and they probably haven't seen that video that I put out. But I'll tell you now, I'll find it. I'll put it out. I'll put it on my community page, if anything. I might do that. Find it and put it on my community page. And also on my Twitter account. And I won't put it on my Facebook account because it's already on my Facebook page. I've just got to find it. But there was definitely a car. Right? You can see the car. Right. Here we are again. We're going to see this again. You'll see the lights come on. Did you see the lights? Hang on. Hold on. I haven't even got going up. Right. Watch it again. And that's that light bulb in the bottom hand corner of that first video Nick Barris put out. That is the light source. So you see this light here, like fl fl flashing here, this little light. Can you see it? It flashes. Yeah? So, that's not a garbage truck. Dirty old man telling his wife will know if that thing was hers. <laughs> oh, God. Will you be a dippy? <laughs> but no, um, it's got to stop. And Tony's is not helping. He's not helping. He's not helping one bit. Yes, I understand Seth said he needed help. Because it's not one for doing the vid the interviews and things like that, he's not. Because as we all know, he doesn't know when to stop. He'll talk about it and then, as I said, he'll talk about something and just giving us the basic details. He doesn't, it goes into a bit more detail and we don't need to know that. And sometimes he's digging his own grave. It was, it was tiny too. <laughs> It was. As I said, if you blinked, you missed. I went over it five times. I thought, I'm not seeing something here. Because when I uh, I was watching JLR and he said to come on, I literally jumped off my sofa, come on my laptop, typed it in, and go, oh, no. So I've gone back again. No. I thought it was some, like, you know, on TikTok, you get these little things that flash up on your screen. Right? And things like that. I thought it was something like that, just flashing up on your screen. I thought, no, it can't be. Then when, by the third time, it's like, third foot, yep, that is what I think it is. And I think Tony put it up. I really do. 
I think he put it up because he seems that sort of guy to do that and then blame someone else. He's always blaming others. Yeah. Because that other family now, they've dropped him, haven't they? You know what I mean? He's just out for the... Like, he told Seth to stay off YouTube. Do you remember him saying that you've got to stay off YouTube? And Seth said, do I have to? And he said, yes. So Steph, Seth stayed off YouTube. And was only on YouTube if he was in a an interview like with Nancy Grace or someone like that. And Tony was with him. Yeah? But then what does Tony do? He goes and opens his TikTok page up. I'm sorry, but TikTok is for kiddies, for the younger generation. I've got a TikTok account, right? And I post, occasionally I put a video up there of Sebastian with music, you know what I mean? Or of another missing child's case that I'm looking at, or something like that. Right, but it's a minute long. He's, he's just out to build his TikTok channel up, TikTok. You got me saying it now. Tick tock channel up. It's just out to build it. <laughs> I can't get that out of my head now. But that is what I was coming on tonight to show those videos and discuss, discuss them. And you do see that light thing. Right? Oh, God, get back up there. You do see a light then, going from around about here, around about here, going all the way back up there, very quickly, going all the way back. And when it gets to a certain point, you don't see the light. Right, because when you think about it, right, she goes into trees, so you're not going to see that light when she gets up to about here. It's all trees, and her own house is just, if I could get, see, if I could get higher. Her own house is just by them trees, actually, just by them trees. Sorry, I've done it again. Right, so the light then goes from here, running up there, quickly moving up there to these trees, and that's where her house is, right up there by these trees. So, I said they use that ditch, that ditch, because that way you are going to be hidden from any cameras really, aren't you, especially in the dark, right? And if you haven't got a torch, she's not going to be seen. But she had a torch. Because that would be very uneven. I would say this is very uneven, walking along here. You know what I mean? It isn't going to be flat. It's going to be up and down, lumpy bumpy. So she needs a torch to see that where she's going. And she's come all the way down here. Up here, past whoever it was in this car that was parked here, past whatever over, they've got in the car and reversed back. As I said, it looks a long way, but it isn't. It really isn't that long when you think about it. It's, uh, it's not that far to reverse back. Reverse back. And down, in a way. It's not your fault. What's you, what's your, what are you doing now, DP? <coughs> what are you doing now? <coughs> I swear to God. TikTok, TikTok. Right. And, um, I just want law enforcement 
to start being honest with us. If they can't tell us something, then tell us. We can't tell you anything. But why can't they show us? Why can't they release that video of whoever it was putting the trash can out? And why can't they release the video of Sebastian leaving the Texas Roadhouse? Why? Why can't they release that? That would keep us quiet for weeks if they release those two videos. Could you imagine? Oh, uh, right. TikTok. <laughs> I've got it in my head now. <laughs> right, but why can't they release those two videos? It's not going to harm the investigation. It will keep the YouTubers quiet. Right? It'll get the YouTubers off this, off this car for a time. It'll get them off this again because we're now back onto the lights. Now we've seen, I've seen that footage of that car. I'm now back on the lights. And I want to know why law enforcement were telling us it was a garbage truck. Because apparently law enforcement said this camera, really good camera, that's pointed down at an angle. Right, you follow line of sight. It's literally going down there, right? Right, this camera is at a low angle as well. It's not high up, it's low. Was able to catch the light of a trash truck. Right? Coming along this road. Hang on. That camera was able to catch the trash truck lights coming along here. Now that's one hell of a good camera. Security camera. If we can catch from this angle, pointing down to here. Right? Pointing down this direction to this house because it got these lights that are on this garage here. Right? Pointing down to there, but was able to get the light of the trash truck coming along here. I think everyone needs to go out and buy one of those house, house security cameras because it's a flipping good one. You know what I mean? It's flipping good if you can pick up a trash truck over from here, which is pointing down to this way, and getting this house and this, right? So it's covering this and this, yeah? But it's also covering getting all this here and a trash truck coming along this road here. Flipping good camera. Go out and buy one. If, you're not, if I ever find out what it is, I'd go out and buy one. Because that is a flipping good camera to catch all that. So, but I said that, I said there's no way that camera, when they, trying to, when they first come out about it not being a garbage truck, uh, being a garbage truck coming along this road, I went, there's no way this camera here was able, which was aimed at this house, caught this house here, the lights, and some of this here, yeah? No way is this camera on this house here, which is very low as well, and angled down, so it's not high up on the house, it's low, and it's angled down, it's going to pick up a flipping trash truck up here. It's not happening. Not happening. So law enforcement. What is behind the Katie filing for divorce, February the 26th, and Sebastian's disappearance, same day? Does KP hate Seth that bad? She had a t-shirt saying evil girl in past photos. I've seen that photo, yeah. I don't know. I mentioned this the other week. What was the coincidence? And someone actually asked Seth that, right? Now, you can tell when Seth talks about... 
he mentioned Katie in his interview the other night. But he mentioned the good times. Your camera's good, is it, Dippy Bed? Are you not seeing that picture of her with her T-shirt saying evil girl? It's one when she was a lot younger. She's a lot younger. Well, I wouldn't say that much younger, but she's younger. And she was with another woman, another girl, another woman. I haven't got that. I didn't save it. I didn't save it. I should have. But I don't know. It's Seth talks about Kate and he looks like, but he, he's still very uptight about the divorce, I think. Right? I don't think he really wanted this divorce. Right? I think it was Katie because he said she was the one that uh, sort of like split the family. She she went against her vows and all this law, right? And he remembers the good times he had with her. And I think that's the problem. That's why he can't talk with Katie because he's not got over her. Could you pick some of that fire up though? Come on, Dippy, could you pick up from an angle that this camera's at, right? Look, this camera is very low. It's not high up, it's very low. Right? It's angled down. So, follow the line of sight. Is coming down this way, yeah, and across, and that's why it picks up these two lights on this garage here, yeah. It's no way is it going to pick up. I know the trees have got no leaves on in February, but there's no way it's going to pick up a trash truck over all these houses, right? It's not going to pick up a trash truck over all these houses when it's angled down at that direction. It's not going to go, oh, hold on, I'll just suddenly go up here and I'll catch that garbage truck coming along there. It's not going to do that. It's not that good. Okay, send me some pics. I hope they're good ones. <laughs> If I lived in a house, I would have so I'd have a ring doorbell. Actually, I'm going to my housing office next, not next week, the week after. And while I'm there, because I want to go talk to them about something, I want to ask them if I can have a ring doorbell on my flat door, right? Because of the proximity of my other neighbours. I might not be allowed to have a ring doorbell because they could say it's an invasion of privacy. I don't care what you're getting up to coming in and out your house. I don't care. Just leave my front door alone. But my neighbours are so close. One, I've got one neighbor to, well, two neighbours to one side of me and one to the other. And the one is literally right next to my door. Their front door is literally right next to my front door. So they might not like it. But if I get permission off the council, I could say, look, I live on my own. Right? And for my own security and my own safety, this is why I'm thinking of having one put in. But I'm getting permission first. If they say no, then I, I can. Can you tell everyone else who's got a ring doorbell then on the flag to take them down? <laughs> right? Ooh. Ooh, I can't wait to see these photos now, DP. Put them on my Facebook page. Send them to me on Messenger. But there's no way this camera from this house caught a truck coming along here. No way. I'm sorry. And this 
is not a garbage truck. I'll try. I'm going to keep playing this. There you go. I So in this video, you're not seeing the lights because they're so that one light is so small. You're not actually seeing it because it's so small. See, there's the one light, and that looks like a. Yep. Boom. There it goes. You shouldn't have turned your lights on. You should not have turned your lights on. We would not have known you was there if you hadn't turned your lights on. But you can see the back. And there's like a little light on the back that keeps flashing as well. Hi. So I just want law enforcement to tell us that is not. Yeah. That is not a trash truck. It's too small for a trash truck. Plus, the back end of the trash truck would be lit up because it has the mechanical arms. Right, so the workers need to know where, where they're putting the bins, don't they? To attach them to the mechanical arms. Can't be doing that in the dark, so that has to be lit up. So this car was between, the neighbours said, had to be between, whatever time, 12 and I'd say 5. Because I think the tr she said shortly after that that car left, not long after, you seen the trash truck come. Oh, done. But they said that was the trash truck. You know what I mean? So the vid perhaps the video they showed Seth was the trash truck. Yeah. But that is not a trash truck. But it would go up to the top of their road. It would go up to the top of Stafford Court. Because they're both, they're all cul-de-sacs. Right? They're all dead ends. And they just go round that way. But this a trash truck is not going to back, reverse back, are they? Like it says in the video, that woman says the car reversed back. So, but I think the police will be kicking themselves now with this woman. <laughs> but what I don't believe is the fact that she she just say things like. She don't know if Faith has been at the house or not. How would she know if Faith was there? Right? Because she lives. Right? They live there. See, PK lives there. Now, she said her house backs up onto the construction site. Yeah? So, it's got to be one of these houses. That she lives in. She's got to be one of them. But she said at the top of Kelling Road. That do, they don't back on to them. That one might. But they did say, she said how her son was on the porch, the back porch, talking to someone. When they seen a light. Someone walking around here. 
with a torch. So it has to be one of these houses. You know what I mean, where she lives. So how would she know, leaving there, if Faith had ever been to that house? She wouldn't. You know what I mean? Do you know who who goes to your neighbour's houses in the next road? I don't. I didn't. I wouldn't be able to tell you what my neighbours in another road did. Is it still on the same estate? Still on the same area? But I wouldn't know what my neighbours did in another road. Who they had there, who stayed there, who didn't stay there. Did they have a barbecue that night? Did they not have a barbecue? Did they go to the shops? Did they not go to the shops? I wouldn't know. You know what I mean? Because to me, this is just another road. The people who would know would maybe be this house, or this house, this house, this house. Because they might see them coming and going with Faith in the car. They might see Faith out in the back garden maybe playing. They would sit here one because they're pretty close. These gardens are very, very close. Right to each other. Even though it's a nice area, they're still very close to each other. So there's bits of what she was saying. I thought, well, how would you know that, love? You know what I mean? Have you got someone here, 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 watching their house 24-7, telling you everything they do? I don't think so. Right, I know she's friends with this woman in this house. But she wouldn't know everything that went on in, the, in here. She wouldn't. Come on. So, and then, so she lives up there. She's not going to, there's not many houses with pools. There's one, two, three, four, five. That looks like a pool's been done. Six would be done by now because this is 20, oh no, 20, 24, 6, 7, 8. Not sure if that's a pool. Maybe nine houses with a swimming pool. I don't know if I live there, if I'd have a swimming pool, because they do have winter, don't they? They have cold days, the winter months. She said top of the hill. Yeah, Kelly Lane. But she also stated that her house, her son was on the back porch. Right? Her son was on the back porch one night which looks over the construction site and saw someone walking around with a torch. So it's got to be this one of these houses at the top of the hill. Unless it was on the front porch and you saw someone with a torch. You know what I mean? Could be that house, perhaps it was the front porch. Because that's at the top of the hill. But I definitely heard you say her back of their house looks over onto the construction site, which is here. Her back of the house there looks out onto trees. These. Now, I know this is a lot of houses have been already been built here because when they've done the drive around, right, they've come, they literally come up this road, right, and they've done the drive around and they've gone along here, along here, and to here, and there's now houses here. There's houses here.
Right. There's nothing built on here yet that I know of. So she did say her back row has went looked out onto the construction site. So it's gotta be the this one, this one, or this one. If she says the top of the hill, I'd say this one then. You know what I mean? But then, if I lived down there and someone said, oh, where'd you live? I'd say at the top of the hill. Even if I lived in this house, at the top of the hill. Because you are at the top of the hill, aren't you, really? All these houses are at the top of the hill. Oh, God's sake, get back up there. Um, Bobby's son could see the construction site from back porch of their house. He saw the figure with night goggles and dressed in black walking around. I was on the construction site to see him with the night goggles. Then was definitely night time goggles. So that's why seeing his son drove around. Yeah, I knew she said she, her house backed up onto the construction site. So it has to be this house that one of these. You know what I mean? And I'll tell you something. That was a bit scary what she's saying about how on earth would he know that young girl that was in the car with them that night? How would he know? Just by her saying her first name. How would he know her full name? Yeah, it was the back porch, yeah. I thought I heard you say back porch. So, hang on. I'm going to share this. Right. So it has to be one of them that has there on the top. If she says, uh, back porch of their house, and she also said she lived at the top of the hill. It's got to be this house here. Got to be this house, I'd say. She likes got some nice grounds to it, hasn't it? All round here, here. You know what I mean? A nice drive, sort of thing. That's the sort of drive I'd like where you drive in and drive out without having to reverse out or something. I'd like something like that. If I could, if I could be enough house and garden, that's what I'd be looking at. So. But that was scary when he, she said how the young girl said, just said, Look, my name's such, whatever, I didn't say a full name. And then you say, well, I think uh, I'll be coming to your mother, your husband, you know, to have a talk to your parents. And I just said the same thing that that girl said. Good luck. Because if anyone had come to my house about my kids, right, and I knew... I'd be going, well, hi, how did you know where we lived? Because my daughter spoke to me. She never told us where, told you where we lived. So how did you find out where we lived? How did you know my daughter's last name? Right? Now, if you don't back off of my porch, I'm going to knock you ten foot flying and six foot under. You know what I mean? That would have really got my back up knowing that someone knew my daughter's last name, surname, and then being able to track down where you live. That's not on. And, you, and he's telling them to get out of the area. They live in that area. You cannot tell them to get out of an area they live. There wasn't on your property. There wasn't on your driveway.
I believe Bobby said the front of her house was on a main road and family lived there for years. Well, she can't, that can't be the case then because the main road down here. You know what I mean? That's the main road. But she said she lived up the top of the hill. I'm going to have to listen to that again. I can't, I won't do it tonight. I'm, I've got to go out tomorrow. I will be back by five-ish though, by tomorrow. I've just got to go and pick my granddaughter up from nursery. And I think I might have to pick my son up, uh, grandson up from school. I'm not sure. I'll phone her up tomorrow morning and find out. But I know I've got to go and pick my granddaughter up from nursery tomorrow. Oh no, I haven't got to pick my grandson up. Because his mum has got a meeting with the school. Just to progress report, you know what I mean? So I've just got to pick my granddaughter up from nursery. And then after the meeting she'll pick her own son up herself and bring him home. So yeah, I'll be home by five o'clock. M cars, you're here. Right. So we've just been going over this video that came out that like, I found last night about the mysterious car. That, that mysterious car that was um, what county roads these but she did say as I said I'll go over that interview again tomorrow I might listen to it on my phone put my earphones in because I swear to God, sometimes I get some funny looks when I go in shops and I'm listening to something on YouTube to do with crime. And I take my earpieces out or my headphones off and I can still hear a little bit in the background on my headphones or my earpieces. And the people are looking at me quite weird sometimes. So I have to pause my video as well. But I might do that while I'm at my... While I'm waiting for my granddaughter to come out tomorrow, tomorrow, listen to it, and then when I come home, listen to it again, and make notes. I did make notes the other night, but I know she said she lived at the top of this road, and her house backed onto the construction site, which is here. Right, which is here. So how can thank you, M Cars. That interview was surprising. But as I said, there's things that she said about like how she how would she know if they've got faith there or not? You know what I mean? They didn't even know they had Sebastian. <laughs> no one saw Sebastian. So how, how would she know when she lives up here, right? And they live all the way down here in another road. You're not going to know that information, are you? Do you know what your neighbours are doing in the other road to you? No. You don't. So, it's little things like that that make me go, hmm. But there's other things they she said going, ooh, yeah, I like that info. And then after I come off my live, I come across this. 
with the lights. Right, come on. That is a car. I don't care. There's the backlight, and you're seeing a minute this little light here flickering. Not the indicator light or something. Flickering. See it flicker? That is not a garbage truck. And like I said, I want law enforcement to tell me that's not that's a garbage truck. So Uh, Karen, M.E. Podcast can give you a live visual. He drove with his wife around the neighborhood where car was parked. <coughs> <coughs> M.E. Podcast, Mr. E. Post. Okay, let me write that down. Podcast. I'll go and check that out. <coughs> <coughs> Someone said it was an ad on FBI. Didn't have, have FBI. Uh, someone said it was an ad on Facebook, sorry. I, didn't have, I don't have Facebook anymore. Also, it was said the girlfriend ran the community Facebook. No, the girlfriend didn't. It was the, the only woman in the interview with JLR. It was that that woman is the one who runs that Facebook page, the community Facebook page. Right? That's why she knows so much information, because she sees all the posts that are put on the community page, on the community Facebook page. And she knows all the neighbours, all the people in there, so she speaks to them. I've got a feeling... That Chris has got faith for the summer because I I heard someone saying a post was put up. Nina put a post up or something, or someone put a post up, and then someone commented and said, "Don't worry, Nina, it's only for the summer holidays." You know what I mean? You no, know, the woman who runs the who was on that interview, she's the one who runs the community Facebook page, not the girlfriend. I don't know why or whatever, whoever said that on Facebook, because you've only got to listen to the uh, interview. She tells you that someone put a post up on the guy, and she's seen that post go up, and then uh, about what's all the commotion going on. And then Katie puts a comment up saying about Sebastian going missing. But then that woman takes that post, no, her comment down, sorry. She put a comment up and then this woman takes that comment down and she said, the only people who can take a comment down is the person who has put the post up or comment up or admin, right? And she said she never took it down. So the had to be whoever put the post up and took the post down. So that's how I know she was the one who runs it. Because she speaks to all the neighbours. And that's why she was calling law enforcement out on a lot of things. About what they were saying about the car. When they said, oh, we've checked that car, we've cleared it, it was an Uber. And she said, no, the Uber was for another house of... Such and such road, right? Uh, let's have a look. It was on for this road, a house for on this road here. That was where the Uber was ordered for for five thirty. So why would an Uber be sitting here, right? And it can have been sitting there at five thirty because she said. The garbage truck then came past. The car was there first. The woman in this house showed her the video. And she said there's two instances. One with a car, one with the garbage truck. 
The car was parked there for a few minutes, then reversed and went away. Short time after, the garbage truck came up. Right? With that then, the garbage truck goes up. Whatever. Shortly after, Katie gets, you see, she said, you see, Katie come past in a car drive. And Katie didn't drive round. Go up here. Didn't drive round here. Come out and went down here. And along to the school. Right. Which is right here. Is that the school? Yeah. Yeah, that's the school. Right. I went up to the school. Did she get out of the car and go into the building and ask if they'd seen Sebastian? Had he come in early? Had he walked up here? But then again, why would he walk up there without no shoes on? So her going and checking out the school did not make sense to me. Did not. Because I'm thinking, he's got no shoes on. Why would he go and walk up to the school? He's a clever lad. Oh, thank God for that. Thank you, Karen. So what was that cryptic post about then? And then someone saying, don't worry, Nina, it's only full of summer holidays. Because I tried looking for that post and I couldn't find it. Right, and um, a few people would have been at the school. Yeah, the school would have been open. That woman said the school would have been open because they have breakfast club and things like that. So, and about what time did she say? She left about, what, 20 past half six, she got in the car and drove around. And was back at the house by seven before the by the time the police got there, she was back at the house. So she didn't get out of the car and have to go in and ask the school, I don't think. I don't think she did get out and ask the school. I think she just drove up that way and then back to the house. Just to make it look on her mileage and on her don't forget her car will have the um record where they track where they go right so at least then she could say well look it's on my record see see i said i sent to the school right so that was just her trying to make it look like look i'll go and have a drive round up to the school and back again right just to make it look convincing i'm sorry but she was the last one with sebastian whether it was an accident or what, we don't know. Did she overdose him with his medication because his medic he wasn't settling down and something happened? Don't know. Did she flip out on him? We don't know. But something happened on that night, Sunday night. I don't care what anyone else says. My attention is on that house and with Katie. She's the one holding the information. Chris, she can't say anything because if she does, she's going to drop Chris in it. Chris can't say anything because if he does, he's going to drop Katie in it. But one of these days, they're going to have them in and they're going to say, we're charging you with. And as soon as they charge them with whatever, one of them is going to squeal like the little piggy. And I know who it'll be. It'll be Chris. Because he didn't do actually do anything. He's just complicit in helping her. She's the one who's done whatever. Right? And that's what that three hour phone call was. Because something happened, I'd say, right about 9.15, 9.30, ish, something happened in that house. 
and that's why she found Chris at 9.40-something, 40 45. And that's why I was on the phone for so long. We don't even know it may have been a three-way phone call. Right? We don't know if it was a three-way phone call. Like the deep with the law enforcement, it was a three-way phone call. Well, if it's like the schools near me, a lot of parents drop off their children and they traffic is crazy, so that makes it interesting. Yes, that was mentioned in that interview because she said, one woman said, oh, I won't go that way because you've got the, the drop-off queue. It's, like, so long. Why wouldn't KP or CP call Seth first thing about if he had been panicking? If Sebastian, if he had Sebastian before panicking. But this is what I can't understand. That, right? He gets a text message of Chris. 911, phone me. Right? When he gets to his car, because he said he's not allowed his, car, his phone in work. So he leaves his car. Muted, whatever, silent, he turns off in his car. He gets in the car, turns the phone on, and sees this message. So he phones Chris up. Don't get mad. But Sebastian's missing. What? No. Chris, uh, Seth, have you been in touch with Sebastian at all? Did Sebastian try and get in touch with you last night? Has he left you a message or anything? No, why? Well, he's not here. He's missing. He walked out the house. That would make me... I'd still be, oh my God, what you mean he's walked out the house, you know what I mean? But I could understand that a bit more rather than don't get mad. They didn't even phone to see if Sebastian had been in touch with him. Yeah. Why didn't she phone his boss? She knew where he worked. I said that as well. He knew. Why? phone his mobile knowing he was at work and knowing he doesn't have his phone on him at work he said himself in that every interview did the other night when he said he has Sebastian and he has to work nights right he'll go to Sebastian I'll phone you on your mobile but it'll be from the work phone so it'll be an unknown number you know what I mean it's just letting him know it'll be this sort of number, so you know it's me. So then he'll answer it. Seth said Sebastian would never leave without his Wally. He had a bank account and bank card and key to Seth's house. Exactly. He had money saved up in his bedroom, cash. No bank card, just cash. He had his Wally and he had cash that he was saving up in his bedroom. None of that was took. So he had his bank card. Right? He had the key to Seth's house. He had cash. He, If you was going to leave your home, would you leave your money behind? Would you? No. No, I'm leaving. I'm out of here. First thing I grab is my phone, my purse. Second thing, my phone. Third thing, I don't want my keys because I'm not coming back. Right? I'd leave my keys. But if I was needed to get into someone else's house and I had the key to them like my son's, then I'd take my keys with me because it would have my son's keys on. Right? So that would be three things I'd take. My phone, my purse, my keys. Right? That's without even putting on shoes and a coat and anything else. My bag. Right? But he took nothing. He didn't run away. He didn't leave that house on his own free will. <coughs> and that car, that video, that car says a lot. It doesn't tell us who it is, but it says a lot. We now know that was not a trash truck. That was not a trash truck. <coughs> <coughs> so, it's just so annoying when 
And the law enforcement don't have to tell us anything. But it's not helping them when they're telling us lies, little little freebies, little white lies, trying to distract us. Because even the law enforcement was saying to that woman, she goes arguing with her, saying, no, that car has been cleared. No, that car has not been cleared. It was not an Uber. You know what I mean? Why would law enforcement try and tell her different when she's seeing it herself on video? He would have taken all his necessities. Yes. You know what I mean? He would have took his wallet, he could took his phone, he could took the cash he had in his house, and he would have took all his other necessities. Coat, shoes, a bag. He knew his way to his dad's. Um, um. <coughs> <coughs> From what I remember, Seth said when he got in his car at 20 past 7, there was a message from, well, several messages or several missed phone calls and a message. And phone calls or messages coming about, what, half six? Something like that. So why didn't she just phone his boss? He could have been out of there. If they phoned at half six, like they said, say maybe the phone just mobile about half six, I'd have to go back to one of the first interviews Seth did to find that out. Uh, but I'm sure it's about half six, something like that, that they sent, tried phoning him. And then sent him the message, 911, call me. And he's seen all this at 20 past 7. And he left there and got to Katie's about 8, 8.15. Between 8 and 8.15. So he's putting his foot down a bit to get there in an hour. In less than an hour. He had, what, 40 minutes if he got there by 8. Doing it in 40 minutes. So he was putting his foot down a bit. And he did say he's trying not to get a ticky. You know what I mean? So. He could have been out of there though by what? If they phoned his office at 20 past 6. Or even half 6. He would have been dismissed from work. Right? Told to, told to leave. He would have been there by half six. He could have been there by seven. Seven fifteen. But he didn't talk to Katie very often. He said that. A lot of the uh, conversations he had was with him and Chris. You know what I mean? Because it's still... Seth still carries some sort of light. A light for Katie. And he hasn't got over that. He hasn't got over that. Right? And he's got to. He's got to move on. He says he's moved on, but I don't think he has because he still, he talks about her so fondly, fondly, when he talks about about the memories when they was together, when they first got married and when they had Sebastian and going fishing, nighttime fishing and all this lot. You know what I mean? So, he still has some feelings for Katie. So, we don't want a really bad mouth, a bad mouth. But he has. He's said some nasty things about her. But then again, he's telling the truth. He knows what Katie's like. As everyone has said, the one person that truly knows Katie, I wouldn't even say CP knows her. The one person that truly knows Katie is Seth. He knows what she's like. She knew, he's seen how she was like with Sebastian when they first had Sebastian. You know what I mean? 
Christ, it wasn't even one, and she signed up for the Navy. I'm sure you could have got another job with good medical care without joining the flipping Navy and having to go away for months on end and leave your husband and your child at home. There's other jobs you could have got which gave good medical care, which could have meant she could have been at home. I don't think she, she really bonded with Sebastian. I really don't. She loves him, but she didn't bond with him, if you know what I mean. KP and CP said Sebastian had no concept of money. Well, Seth was t You know what I mean? I'll tell you something now. Sebastian knew a lot. They say they're not sure whether he knew his way. He had no coordination of getting anywhere, right? But he knew his way to his dad's. He knew his way to Culver's, which means if he knew his way to Culver's, he knew his way to the Texas Roadhouse, right? So he had good coordination. He's 15. And I swear to God, autistic children are so clever like that with directions and even, and they are good with money. Right? Okay, my grandson is six. You give him a pound. Oh, I can go and buy a big toy now. No, Ellis, you can't. You've got a pound. You're lucky if you get a sweet for a pound. You know what I mean? But he's six years old. But I'm sure by the time he's 15, he's going to have a lot more concept of money. By the time he's 15. You know what I mean? Sebastian was really clever, but Katie and CP are making him out not... But say, the same one breath, he's very clever. Very clever. He can play fucking chess. I can't. I can't play chess. I I sit and look at a ball and I go, which ones do I have to move? Do I have to move these little ones at the front first or can I move these big ones at you know what I mean? I don't know what I'm doing. Now he's fifteen, he can play chess. He's been playing chess for a long time. Yeah. He he's got a good concept of getting from A to B, B to C, C to D. He knows that. He knows. He's got a good concept of money as well. Right, so when they're trying to say, well, you give him $20, he wouldn't, he wouldn't think about some anything like that. You know what I mean? I'm thinking he would. He would. He's 15 years old. He would. The only problem I have with my grandson is, like, if we go to the shop and we're buying something, I give him the money to pay for it, right? So, the, like some shops, I have the cash. I don't have cash on me very often, I use my card. But sometimes I have cash on me. And I say, yeah, you pay the lady. And you'll give the lady the money, but then walk off. And I'm going, uh, don't forget the change. And he doesn't think about picking up the change. That's his concept of money. He's six years old. I'm not going to, he's not that genius to think, oh, I've got to wait for change. But I'm sure when he's 15, he'll know how to wait for that money to come back to you. Wait for the change. And Sebastian is the same. So the fact that they say he's very clever in one hand, and then say he's got no, he's got no conception of direction or dealing with money. We know he does. Seth was teaching him all that. Right, and if he wanted to run away, why did he never run away? Look all the time, right? Look all the times when he's being at home with his mum. And his mum's being at work. And Seth said there's been some times when she's not been home till what, seven o'clock at night. He gets home about what, half three, four? If he really wanted to run away, why didn't he do it then? 
why wait till the middle of the night and leave the house with no necess none of the essential stuff that he needed? None of it. You know, if I was going to run away or go to my dad's or whatever, I'd go, right, got my wallet, got my money, got my keys, got my phone, I'm going. And I'd be gone before my mother even stepped out of her works. You know what I mean? I'd probably be at my father's by the time she got out, got home. So, he had good knowledge of how to get to his dad's, right? Whether he knew about public transport, what bus to get there. Would you know what bus to get there? I don't know. But he knew how to get there. So he could have ordered uh, an Uber. He had the money. He had money. He had cash. He had a bank card. So he had money for it. Well, it cost the earth, but he could have done it. But that's what I'm saying. If he wanted to run away, he could have done it any time. Any time. While his mum was at work. While he's been at his dad's, and his dad was at work, he couldn't run away. But he never did. He never ran away because he knew his bedroom in the, at his home with his mom, his bedroom was his sanctuary, was his safe place. That's where he was 99% of the time, in his bedroom playing. That's where he felt safe. Right? At his dad's, he felt safe in the living room, or in his bedroom, anywhere in the house, he felt safe anywhere. But in his home, he felt safest in his bedroom. Because he wasn't around Chris. He wasn't having to sit and see Chris all, all the time when Chris was at home. KP videoed every encounter with CP and Nina when Faith got visits with them. KP videoed every encounter with CP and Yinga. Really? I know she used to, she went to Wangali when Yinga had the, uh, when she was only getting visiting, where she had, she only got to see a daughter for half an hour, a week or something like that. I know Katie was there on Wangali drop-offs. So, Katie knows what Chris is like. I think Katie's scared of him. She's seen what he's like. And he's manipulated so bad. But, saying that, Katie's got secrets on see Chris, yes? So, Chris has helped Katie out now. Because of her dilemma, possibly, allegedly. So say something happened and she's asked Chris for help, he's coming and helped her. Because she's probably said, well, don't forget, I know about bum, bum, bum. And that's what she's holding against him now, right? To not talk. Because if he talks and tells them what actually happened, then she's going to drop him in it. With Nina. But I didn't know KP videoed every encounter with CP and Nina when Five got physics with him. Didn't know that. But I still say it all goes back to Christmas. When he had faith at Christmas. Right? And it's got nothing to do with Sebastian because there's some nasty rumour going about about Sebastian and Faith over the Christmas period. Um, Sebastian was at his dad's. Right? So Sebastian was at his dad's over Christmas. Faith was with KP and CP. Faith goes back after Christmas. In the new year, Nina goes to the courts and tries to put an injunction in or something like that. I don't know the true wording, but put a, 
a hearing in for a hearing at court. Right? To stop Chris from having, from getting custody or visiting rights of faith. So something was said or something happened while Faith was with her dad. Faith has gone home and told her mum. Her mum then goes to the court in the New Year's and gets this motion put in place. And then something happened where CP was called, uh, Child Services CS was called, and Chris was told he wasn't to be in the home while Sebastian was there until this case is being cleared and closed. And that's why CP was not at home during February. Nothing to do with the fact that, oh, well, he does work weekends. That's not feck all to do with it. It's got everything to do with child services. But why did child services not tell Seth. Why was it they didn't get in touch with him? His 50-50 custody. They should have told him. They should have. And I swear to God, if, Chris, if Seth don't do something, one, once this has all been cleared and Sebastian's brought home, why? If Seth doesn't prosecute Child services. I don't know. I think they they failed that lad. They didn't tell his dad. They chastised him for telling lies, which I think if they did, then that is disgusting because that child is not going to be telling anyone. You know what I mean? Well, it's pointless me telling the teachers now at school because. When CS comes out, they only moan at me for telling lies. So he couldn't tell school no more. The only person he could tell was his grand. And I think she's kicking herself now again. She's kicking herself big time. That she didn't do something sooner, tell someone sooner. You know what I mean? But she couldn't betray Sebastian's trust. I can see that. I can really see where she's coming from. But I think there's ways around about saying to Sebastian, Sebastian, we need to talk to your dad about this. Do you want me to sit with you and talk to your dad about this? So it, nice and calmly. Let's get this sorted out once and for all. You know what I mean? There's ways of talking to a child and getting them to go, okay, we can do that. You know what I mean? She's, there's ways of saying it, but she didn't. So I'm not going to kick her anymore because she's kicking herself enough. Two days after Christmas 2023, they flew out to New Mexico to get six-year-old faith. Nina went back to a truck and a man tapped on her window and said, you have been served. Nina rang into the airport. Really? That's when it all started, wasn't it? Yeah. So they got on a flight with Faith. Yeah. And then as that flight pl flogs taking off that boat, gl that man's tapping on her window. That's when she had that fight then with the court and everything, wasn't he? Yeah. But no, um, I wouldn't trust. My child going with to see Pete. I really wouldn't. After everything he's put her through. <coughs> How he tried to run her over by reversing the car on her. While the kids were in the car. And she's trying to stop the little in the car.
But would that be after she got custody? Because she got custody of the little girl. Oh, you know what? I'm going to have to sit and watch that new interview. I did sit and watch it, but it was too upsetting. But now I'm getting to the point where I think I can sit and watch it and actually take notes. So that's another interview I need to look at. But I can probably listen to that while I'm travelling down to my daughter's the weekend. And on the way back, I've got a two and a half hour travel back. So I've got two and a half hours on a coach back home. So I've got plenty of time to sit and listen to uh, a lot, uh, a video. So I might do that as well. But, you know, that's just, I can't believe that though. That I, 2023, Christmas 2023, that would have been after she had custody. Of her daughter. Right? Because the reason I kept her the first time was because she went into hospital and his Chris's sister had her two her two other kids and his mother had faith. When she came out of hospital, the sister brought the two other children back, right? But then the stepfather, stepfather came to the house or whatever with a baseball bat and said, get yourself and your kids out of this house before I smash the bat over you. Sort of thing. And she wasn't allowed to take, get a faith. And then she had to go through the courts Finally, she got faced back. So I'm going to have to check up on the guides of order. But I know she was there this Christmas, just gone. Christmas 20, yeah, 2023. I've gone two days after Christmas 2023, they flew out to New Mexico to get six-year-old Faith. Nina went back to the... But it was in 2024, January 2024, that she went to the courts. Oh, okay. Sake. I heard they had her over the Christmas, you see, because while they had her over Christmas, Sebastian was at his dad's. And then when she went back after Christmas, she went to the courts in the new year, which would be 2024. But that makes more sense now. That makes a lot more sense now, Karen. Wow. She can be, can't she? Yeah, she can be devious. I'm glad she's got her back then. Perhaps that's what... That's what happened then. Perhaps that's why she went to the courts in the new year. You know what I mean? She couldn't do nothing until the new year because the courts are all closed, aren't they? over the Christmas period and New Year. So she'd have to wait till the New Year. That's disgusting, though. 
The Nina had to get psychological if I the actual yelling through the airport to stop them. You're joking me. Oh my lord. No way. Nina had to get a psychological evaluation. Uh, well, I think there'd be a lot of mothers getting a psychological evaluation if that happened. I'd be a crazy woman running through that airport. So, so what? I seen that psychological thing on the records, but we thought it was more for Chris, not for Nina. But now it makes sense. It makes sense that just. Oh my lord! But KP, she's sick. I'm sorry. She's done something to her own son. Well, I'm sorry, I believe, my opinion, something happened on the Sunday night, and you mentioned about the 26th. I think that was on her mind as well. I think that date is on their minds every year, and I think there's been an argument or disagreement with her and Sebastian. Why? Right? And she's thrown that up in the air about eight years ago I divorced your father and now you're telling me you want to go and live with him. You know what I mean? And something happened. But I think it was before 9.30. Yeah, because didn't he say uh, he wouldn't be there when she phoned him? Or well, when he phoned her to tell her about Sebastian going missing, she said, well, we've got a hearing on March the 3rd. And he said, I won't be there. Now, how would he know he wouldn't be there? For all he know, Sebastian went missing on the 26th, so he could have found him on the 27th, 28th, 29th, 1st, the 2nd. You know what I mean? How would he know he wouldn't be there? And CP was just nasty towards Sebastian. Just nasty. That poor lad. I feel sorry for him because he couldn't tell his dad because he knew how his dad would react, which... I'd react the same way if I was a father and my child told me this was going on. I'd react the same way. Right? And he didn't want that to happen to his dad because he knew his dad would get in trouble. So he couldn't tell his dad. So... And when they go on about how he didn't want to go and live with his dad, he didn't, he wanted to live with his dad, he just didn't want to do the online schooling. But when his dad spoke to him about the online schooling, right, which was only temporary, until it, so that he could do his schooling and also get the proper help he needed, right, to help him with in groups of people, his behaviour and all that lot, to get him the proper help that he needed. Once he explained that, he said Sebastian was fine. He had his godson or god uh, son there or whatever at the same on the online school as well. So he wasn't going to be on this online school without knowing anyone. He, he knew someone. Yeah, CP called CPS multiple times over nonsense. CP went to the children's school. Her children were tormented by... Oh, my God. Oh, 
Like, it's, that is just, like I said, I've I'm sorry. Like I said, I've walked out. So yes, Fife was kidnapped twice. Twice. I'm glad that she hasn't he hasn't got a mark for this summer. I am. So because there's no way they'd be giving that little girl back, would they? They wouldn't be giving her back. And especially while they've got another child missing in their home, from their home, they're going to hang over his daughter to them. It's, yeah, it's crazy, isn't it, cos? It's just crazy. There's no way corks are going to hang over their, the daughter to him while they've got a missing child. While police were called to the airport and told Nina the judge wouldn't be happy over this, so Nina was served. Oh my God. That's disgusting. That is ridiculous. So if, say say you did get it for the summer holidays, right? Just say you did. Would you say he hanged her back? Do you really think that he will take her back? No, I don't. There's no way that guy is going to hang over his daughter back to her again. Not after everything he's been putting her through. And her own and her own two children through. He's not gonna hang back five. And I wouldn't trust him. I if I was her, she could go for I hope she's got the um Oh God, because she's there's an organization that can help her. Can't remember what's called now. So I hope she's got them helping her. I can't think what it was called now. Someone did say it once in a live that I watched and I can't remember what it was. I can't even remember what live it was on. But I remember someone saying something about it. But like this, that's just crazy. So... That has gone against him. CP was pissed about Nina letting Faith wear leggings. What? You're joking me. Because she put leggings on her daughter, he didn't like it. What, did you, what would you rather wear, little dresses? You know what I mean? Playing about in the garden, falling around. Right? No, you put leggings on them. Especially in the winter, to keep the little legs warm. I mean, they're out in the dirt playing outside. It's, it's, it actually protects their legs a lot from any bumps and... I wouldn't say bumps or bruises because you still bruised. But any possible scratches and cuts and things like that. I love to see my granddaughter in dresses, but she looks so cute in leggings as well. So, it's just, I can see a judge, well I'd hope to think a judge would say, you know what, this is enough. This is enough. You're, you're picking up on, you're complaining about and bringing in you're serving, you're getting the mother served just because she's putting her daughter in leggings. That is ridiculous. That's just totally ridiculous. See, I haven't heard all about that. As I said, I did watch that first interview, but I didn't take notes because it was so upsetting. 
so upsetting. But now I'm at that time where I think I could possibly sit there and take notes of dates and times and things like that. So I'll do that while I'm travelling down to my daughter's on Friday. Try and get a seat with no one sitting by me. So then they won't see me what I'm writing. See what I'm writing down. Because <laughs> you know how people can be if you're sitting on a couch and you've got someone next to you and you're sitting there making your two. I've done it myself. Hmm. Looked over to see what they're writing about. Revenge is sweet for Chris. Needing a change, five to. Thank you. Yes, because there's a tribal organisation thing that can help with the corpse as well. Oh my lord. Wet nuts. Oh my lord. It's just ridiculous. Kathy's got no say in this, full stop. So she can butt out, and that would be my answer to her. You can butt out, you've got no say in this, full stop. And as for you, Chris, you're, you can butt out, butt out. All you've ever done is try and kidnap my daughter from me twice. I think you should have lost all rights to any visiting rights, any parental rights, everything. He should have lost the lot the first time he kidnapped her daughter. And to try it again, and for Katie to be involved. No, that's wrong. So if she gets the tribal, there's an organisation, a tribal organisation that can, who can help with the courts. If she gets them on them, gets them in, he won't win. He will not win. Right? Because they have different laws to uh, the U to the Americans. This tribal organisation, they have different laws. They come under the, the law enforcement, don't get me wrong, but their laws are different as well. Like, in a lot of cases. <coughs> And they said if they get if she can get them to help, which they would help her, right? He won't win. He won't win. I know this is <coughs> <coughs> Well first of all, right? You've got the one kidnapping on it. Right when you kidnapped the daughter the first time. You've now got a second kidnapping on him, right? You've got several child services reports on him. Right? Several chi child reports on him. You've also got a child missing from his home. And he thinks he's going to get custody of his daughter. Two kidnappings, right? Several C child services reports on him. And now a missing child. It just adds up. Keep adding it up, Chris. Keep adding up. Because the next report will be uh, oh, gone. Clink, clink. Give you a clue. I watched that first interview and I was in tears. Is there another interview, Karen? I haven't heard of another interview. I've watched the first interview. But as I said, I wasn't taking notes because I was, it's was too upsetting. But I will try and watch it. I'll watch it again with my earphones on. On my phone. 
But if I can get internet on the coach. Well, I can get internet from my phone, connect it from my phone to my laptop. Glute, um, hot spot it. And I can watch it on my laptop on the coach down there. Alright, I've just put my earphones in. Because it's not right. What I was hearing the first in that interview was not right. How he treated their other two children. And, no. So he's got all that against him as well. She's got all that against him. You know what I mean? On her side. Plus now you've got CPS, Child Services Report, and a missing child. It's not going to... If a judge... I swear to God, if a judge ever gave custody or even 50-50 custody to him and Nina, I'd literally lose it. Because this would be as bad as Adam Montgomery. Right? He didn't want his daughter. But he didn't want the mother to have her either. And the judge, knowing very well that all the reports hadn't been put in, all the checks hadn't been done, still gave Adam Montgomery custody of his daughter. Right? Now, I hope to God we haven't got another case like that coming up. Nina needs permission from Chris to do just about everything. But Nina has her kids in 4H and Mexican folk dancing and football. And her oldest daughter is a cheerleader. CPH. He, does, he doesn't like her culture. He doesn't like her culture. He's, he's been said. But, um, so, uh, Chris, I'm just phoning you up to say, can I put this dress on my daughter today, please? Get the fuck. Oh, uh, Chris, is it all right my daughter, if your daughter goes to this after school club? Get the fuck. You know what I mean? Good for her, yeah. You know what I mean? They, they sound like they're doing really, really well. So, JLR has permission from Trev Time to show video of Nina. So, the reason of a video then, Karen? I know there's one video of Nina, it's their second video. Because that would be interesting to watch that one as well. So I've not shown that video or talked about that video on my lives. Right? Because that is... Some people might say it's got everything to do with Sebastian, but it hasn't. It hasn't. It's got everything to do with Nina and Faith, but not Sebastian, right? And it's got everything to do with Chris. It shows us the sort of person Chris is. But it's not helping Sebastian. It's not helping find Sebastian, in my eyes. So I never, ever talked about it on here. Other channels did, I didn't. But if there's another video, I would like to see that. So, anyway, it's coming up to three and a half hours. I was on here late last night as well. I was on here nearly f over four hours last night. So it's coming up to three and a half hours. So I'm going to say thank you to everyone. Nina doesn't have the money for all the time CP has taken her to court. Nina had to pay CP lawyers for charging. 
But if she gets that tribal organisation, the lawyers for that, she wouldn't have to pay for it. That's what was said. They have a tribal thing where they've got lawyers, right? And she wouldn't have to pay for any of it. Nina had to pay Chris's lawyer. For ch Why? Why would she have to pay CP's lawyer for changing school? What's a lawyer got to do with changing school? That doesn't make sense. What has a lawyer got to do with changing schools? She needs to get the tribal organisation to help her with her, with her lawyers. Because someone said, I can't remember the name they used, and I can't remember if it was Chris McDonough or someone else like that, said there's an, a tribal organisation which could help her with her lawyers. Or something like that. And I can't remember who said it. So it'd be interesting to hear that, to find that out. Anyway, if you want. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, MCOS. And if, um, what's the name where is she? Where's my little troublemaker? Dippy. She's probably gone. She's probably gone. Thank you. Anyway, everyone for being here on YouTube and X. Please give me a like. Leave me a like, subscribe, it costs you nothing, and I will be back tomorrow. I'm not sure what I, what day is it tomorrow, Wednesday, isn't it? So I don't know what I'll be covering tomorrow. It's a potluck tomorrow. I don't know what I'm covering. I don't know if it'll be Whitney Hatfield. Or one of the cases that I mentioned today, this afternoon, in the live that I've done this afternoon. Or if something happens in the Sebastian's case. If nothing new comes out, then I'm not doing nothing else on Sebastian at all. I'll do my weekly things with Sebastian, like my updates sort of thing. But I'm not going to do another live this week unless something new comes out. Okay? So, um... If there's any case you'd like me to look at, please message me. I've got my email address. It's going along the bottom, but it's also here. If there's anyone you'd like me to talk about, to look into a case that needs looking into, let me know. I will look into it, and I'll do a live. Right? Uh... I've listened on and off. Uh, oh, God, what am I doing? Right. What am I doing? Nina went, never went that route. She, she regrets. She, should, she still could, though. She still could go that route. The answers, no, but I think it's so long, people were not watching to the end. The answers to Sebastian's you know, missing are Nina's testimony. Oh, right. She didn't have permission in the parent plan from CPS to do that. What do you mean, the parent plan? What's stopping her from getting the tribal lawyers to come and help her? I don't get that. They're lawyers. It's just that they're tribal. You know what I mean? It's wrong. It's wrong what he's putting us with. It's disgusting. And it just shows you the sort of guy we are dealing with. 
what Sebastian and it's like when you said he doesn't call me dad he doesn't call me father he calls me Mr Chris that was his choice to call me that well I've got a few choice words I'd call you but I can't right so just showed you the sort of guy we are dealing with and what Sebastian was dealing with and now it sounds like the mother could be just as bad as Chris. Or is she? Who do you think would squeal first if they got charges put against them? Chris or Katie? I think Chris would squeal first. Because he's not going to go down and do a hard time for her. Oh, no. No, 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 no. He's not going to do that. So, anyway, I'm going to go. I'm going to leave you all. Yeah, I think Chris, yeah, he squeal first. Because he's not going to go down for her. He's not. He's not going to do it. He's not going to... End up in jail. It's going to end up in jail anyway, put that way. Well, I hope law enforcement are listening to these YouTube channels. I know there's a lot of bitching that's going out there on a lot of channels. Forget them ones. Forget them ones. Concentrate on the channels that are actually talking about Sebastian. Actually talking about Sebastian and what he went through. And what he lived and who he was living with. Listen to those channels. I'm not saying that because of my channel. I'm saying it because there are some channels out there still there for Sebastian. But you see, the cease and desist has put everything, everyone off a little bit. But what it's meaning is, if you're talking about Sebastian in a positive way, which we are, you won't get a cease and desist. It's only if you... Have if you mention Sebastian in your life and then you talk negative about him, then you'll receive a cease and desist, which I don't blame them. They should not be using Sebastian's name in anything but a positive note. She works in the city. I heard Katie's gone back to work. And some people are saying, how can she go back to work? You have to go back to work. She, she cannot stay at home off work. She's got to work. They've got a mortgage to pay. They can't pay it on just his wages. They can't. Right? They're paying rent on the grounds at the camper place. Right? They're paying a monthly rent on that. They're paying a mortgage. They haven't got the money to pay both. Not on just his wages. I don't care. So she has to go back to work, which I fully understand. But does that mean she's back home? So I don't know. I've heard she's gone back to work. I don't know. So we'll see. Anyway, as I said, I'll be back on tomorrow. Potluck is the name of the game tomorrow. I don't know who I'm talking about or anything. But you'll know before, or oh, a good few hours beforehand, because the I'll do my, I'll set it all up in the morning before I go out. TL said they are moving. That's what I've heard. Right, but the neighbours said, uh that they know, she knows several state agents, state real estate people in that community. And no one has heard anything about that house going up for sale. But it wouldn't surprise me. Because Katie doesn't want to be in that house on her own. Because she knows what happened in that house. As I said, if I was in the USA and I had the money, and that house went up for sale. I'd buy it. 
But before I moved in, I have everyone in that house, DNA, forensics, everything done on that house. Ground, surveillance, everything. And then once that comes back cleared, then I go in, redecorate, paint it, decorate, whatever, and put my mark on the house and then move in. But I'd open it up to have it forensically searched and if it means taking the skirting boards off, the floor boardings, whatever, do it. It'll put my mind at rest. But I'd buy that house. There's several people, two people have had to take their house off the market because people are phoning up for viewing. It's not for a viewing to buy, just to be nosy in the area. So the real estate people have said, take your house off the market. We're just getting lots of phone calls off random people who really aren't interested in buying your house. So they've had to take their houses off the market because of this. So perhaps if they did sell up and move out, that would be better for them, you know what I mean? For the other people in the area who want to sell their houses. It wouldn't surprise me if they are. It wouldn't surprise me, Karen. That would not surprise me one bit. They've got a high mortgage. They've got to be paying a lot on that house. His wages isn't that brilliant. I don't know how good her was. Yes, she had uh, like pension or whatever from the Navy. Right? But his wages alone is not enough to keep the mortgage going and to pay the ground rent at the caravan park. So she's having to go back to work. Simple as. Anyway, I'm going to say goodnight to you all. Thank you all for being here with me tonight. Thank you for commenting. And everything, just being here. I really do appreciate you all for being here. So thank you once again. And I'll see you tomorrow night. See you then. Night night.